of olivine being one of the first things to to form in a in a magma in a magma chamber. So you can imagine that there are a bunch of of, of elements in a in a magma chamber. Well, as minerals form, it becomes considerably depleted. And eventually you're just left with whatever's left, depending on that magma body. Well, in the case of borate, that boron isn't really readily going to bond in any of the silicates. And the silicates are the biggest group of minerals. So if you have boron in a, ba in a body of magma, it's going to end up being some of the, of the stuff that's left in that residual melt. melt. Um, and then what happens is, is you get a lot of hydrothermal, so water interaction, with a magma chamber. And it actually takes that boron... And it goes into hot springs and things. And those hot springs, when they evaporate, precipitate borates. Um, Playa Lakes are another area where you can get borates too. Playa Lakes are seasonal lakes where they only happen. They're very, very common in the desert, like in Death Valley and other, other de deserts as well, where you get a substantial amount of rainfall. You might get a flash flood because uh, it doesn't really rain that much and it, the permeability is pretty low. So you, get, you might get a flash flood, the water... The water collects um, in an area, the, the lowest elevation in a, in a basin, um, and then it forms a little lake. It might stay there for a couple weeks, maybe a month, maybe a year, but eventually it does dry up, and it happens regularly. And you'll see a lot of mud cracks form in the desert from Playa Lakes, which are really, really, really cool, because when clay absorbs water, it swells. And when it evaporates, it shrinks, and then it forms these little polygons all over the floor. You might have heard the racetrack playa where the sailing stones are. It looks like that, if you've seen that. Um, so that's basically the general setting for ulexite and other borates. Um, it is uh, sodium, calcium, boron, oxygen, hydroxyl, and then, of course, water. You're going to have water molecules because it's an evaporate. It's a hydrous mineral. It's a very, very, very soft mineral, so you can actually scrape this one with your fingernail. Well, it's about the hardness of your fingernail. Uh, generally speaking, the hardness of your fingernail is about a two and a half. Um, hardness in terms of minerals or in terms of physical properties of minerals has to do with the ease to which the mineral is actually scratched. The toughness is a different term. We don't actually use toughness. We use hardness and we use tenacity. Tenacity is how the mineral breaks. And in this case, I th oh, actually, I don't know what the tenacity is. Oh, it's brittle. I thought it actually, no, I'm thinking gypsum. There's a variety of gypsum that's sectile. Anyway, um, it's a brittle tenacity. So that's actually how it's going to, to break or deform under stress or pressure. Um, it does have three planes of cleavage. One is poor, one is good, and one is perfect. And um, yeah, it has three. Sphalerite has six. Uh, fluorite has uh, four. Micas have one. Quartz has zero cleavage planes. Cleavage planes have to do with how easily a mineral is going to cleave at the atomic scale based on the bond types in the mineral. So you might have a specific direction in bond types that are weaker than the other bond types because you can have multiple types of bonds, ionic, covalent, van der Waals, et cetera, et cetera, metallic bonds. And some are weaker than others. And in certain directions, they might cleave preferentially. You can still have fracturing of minerals but you can also have cleavage as well and those are two completely different properties we describe the cleavage and the fracture differently no nah, it's just ulexite ulexite's really cool so it's a borate which means it ends in bo3 it's a negative charge of three um and of course again most of these are evaporates uh evaporite sorry there have been about 150 borates that have been identified, but today, of course, we are only going to be talking about ulexite. Boron doesn't fit in structures of common igneous rocks, so which is why it gets concentrated in residual melt, like I mentioned, which is why it ends up getting carried into hot springs and thus making borates via evaporation. Uh, they're common. Borates are actually very, very common in California, Tibet, Turkey, uh, in the Andes, but in the Andes and Peru specifically. Bolivia, Argentina, and Chile. Uh, it's not going to be found in wet climates. You have to have a dry desert climate so that this can actually form as the water evaporates. Most of the most common borates actually include uh, ulexite, the one we're talking about, borax, and colmenite. Those are the big three. Uh, kernite is another one, too. That's that's really, really common. I never had any samples of colmenite, but I did of, of kernite. Um, oh, it can be made for glass fiber insulation. Borosilicate glass. 
detergents, soap, flux, ceramics, wood preservatives. I'm sure uh, borax is probably the one that you've heard of in, in, in detergents. You may have heard of this. Um, it's like that old school white soap, that dry soap, that the powder soap. You got Yeah, the 20 mule team borax. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, it is effective at cleaning clothes. It is in detergent. Yes. Also, the isotope uh, of there's another isotope, boron 10. That's a good neutron absorber, and it's used in nuclear reactors as shielding material. Oh, uh, borates are also used in pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, insecticides, adhesives, blah, blah, blah. Lots of stuff. Very, very useful. So going over the quick details of Ulexite, it's uh, it's triclinic. That's the that's the crystallographic system in which it lives. That's the that's the that has to do with the the three axes of the crystal and the angles in between. Um, there's six different crystal systems that exist. Uh, there are many different shapes in each of those each of those systems, but they're those are the basic building blocks, the six basic building blocks. The hardness is two and a half. Uh, specific gravity is pretty low. It's only 1.96. Another piece of literature said it was two. They probably just rounded it up. Um, it's a white colorless material. Obviously, we could see that. It doesn't really vary in color. Uh, I don't know of any actual minerals that can that can uh, replace for the, the sodium and, and calcium. I'm sure that there are. I'm Maybe things like magnesium or, I don't know, maybe barium. Uh, things that are similarly charged and sized. Barium might be a bit big. I'm not sure. It would depend on that structure. Um, and it has a white streak, which which means that's the color if you were to pulverize the mineral. Because minerals actually do have a different color when you pulverize them versus when you just look at them. In some cases. In this case, not so much. They're both white. Uh, it can be vitreous. That has to do with the light actually reflecting off of the material. But it can also be silky, depending on which end you're looking at. So this would be the silky, the silky end, and these would be more vitreous samples over here if light were actually reflecting off of them nicely. Um, they can form a secular, uh, a secular crystal, so kind of needle-like in shape, some kind, sometimes. And if you were to actually smash this, it would it would break up into a lot of little splintery like pieces, fibery pieces. It's um, not as bad as kernite. The evaporate deposits of ulexite specifically occur in saline lakes, so they do. They do happen in saline ones. And it is TV rock. It transmits images, which we can see here. Oh, it does fluoresce. That's cool. It fluoresces. Health risks, no information. Slightly decomposed in cold water and much more in hot water. Loss of sodium to the solution. Interesting. There's a lot on Ulexite. Kernite. I want to look up kernite really quick. It's the other one that, that was destroyed. This is kernite. It's very uh, splintery and fibrous and can break apart very easily and stick in your skin. And it's two and a half, so it breaks really, really easily. It's pretty brittle. It's flexible? I don't remember that. But it is splintery. That hurts. Index of refraction similar to Ulexite. 